Uh, my name is Kobe Bryant. I'm 17 years old, and I've been lucky enough to live not only in different parts of the United States, but uh, Europe as well. My father played professional basketball. He played for the Philadelphia 76ers, Houston Rockets, and the San Diego Clippers. He played professional basketball for eight years, and uh, after eight years, after his eighth year, he decided that it would be best for him to move on and to take his talent elsewhere. So we packed our bags and moved to Italy, where uh, he played professional basketball again for eight years. At the time, I was only six years old, and I was pretty much clueless about the whole situation. But my parents basically told me, Kobe, you're going to an Italian school. We want you to learn a new language. And uh, when you're young, you just basically do whatever your parents tell you to do with no questions asked. So I said, fine, I'm going to learn this new language, which I did. Uh, I can speak Italian fluently. And I met a lot of new faces, a lot of interesting people. And you know, Italy became my home. Now, my heart is there. My heart will always be there. So it's very hard. My father told us that he's retiring from the game of basketball and that it was time for us to come back to America. I didn't want to come back, and my sisters didn't want to come back. But when it was time to start school, I thought that me and my sisters would be together, the same school, just like in Italy. But my sisters were older than I was. They were starting high school. So Sheree and Shay attended Lower Marion High School, and I was stuck at Bala Kenwood Middle School. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was very hard getting adjusted, simply because I had a lot of trouble understanding English and the slang. But one thing I had in common with some of my other students and classmates was basketball. And unfortunately, because of the lack of communication with my peers, I wasn't invited to parties or you know, friendly, friendly gatherings on the weekend. So on Fridays and Saturdays, I would go in my rec room with my basketball and basically dribble myself to sleep. And I think that that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because during those lonely hours in the rec room, I discovered the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I could be. And, you know, here I am today, giving an oral presentation in English class, not only in front of Mr. Rigby's camera, but the camera of PRISM and ESPN. And I enjoy it. I enjoy all the attention because it's a great feeling to know that you set a goal for yourself and you were able to reach that goal and to knock it down. I have a big decision coming up, and that's whether or not you go to college or straight to the NBA. The thing that bothers me the most about this decision is when I'm walking down the street, I'm walking in the mall, going to get a hat or something, and somebody I've never, ever seen before comes up to me and tells me what they want me to do. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? I know you. I mean, they're coming up to me and they're saying, well, I think you should do this. I think you do that. I want you to do this. This is what I think you're going to do. And I'm just sitting there listening like, oh, OK, nice, nice. Thank you, thank you. OK, nice meeting you. Bye-bye. But you know, it comes with the territory. And I move on, and I understand that. I've admired a lot of people, people such as Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Emmitt Smith, and entertainers such as Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson. But the two people that I admire the most are my mother and my father. Because when things were going great, or whether things were going bad, they were always there for me. For instance, if I just played a great basketball game, had 40 points or whatever, I'm getting all this positive feedback from people who are at the game. My head swelling up and everything. <laughs> my parents would be the first people to tell me, hey, look, you played a great game, but there's no need for your head to get all big. There's no need for you to get cocky and think that the world owes you something. But and at the same time, when things are bad, things are going bad, they would come up to me and say, hey, you know, there's another day. The sun will come out tomorrow. It's time for you to move on and uh, go for bigger and bigger sites, such as, set some bigger goals. Uh, I thank them. I love them with all my heart. And I thank you all. You've been a great audience. <laughs> and thank you.
you really, uh, you you really consider Italy home. That's where you grew up. That's where I grew up. That's uh, where my friends are, and that's I basically learned um, facts of life. So that's my home. You speak Italian. Yes, I do. That was your first language. Then. Exactly. Exactly. Is it true? And if so, tell me just a little bit in your words. Is it true? You had a tough time when you came back with the English language. Yeah, I had a real tough time. Uh, I had trouble not speaking English, but understanding English. Because when I was over there, my, me and my sisters would talk, but we would talk at an even pace. And when I came back over here, everybody was like motor mouth. Everybody was running real fast, talking all types of slang. I really didn't understand. You know, so I had difficulty understanding what they were saying. What is the best thing about Italy? The best thing about Italy is everybody believes in family values. Family comes first. And if you're walking down the street, if you don't know the person, the person speaks to you. You know, hi, I'm Kobe, or, you know, how are you doing? And whereas over here, it's like, if I don't know you, I'm not going to speak to you. I'm, I'm going to look at you evil or something. But over there, everybody's very friendly. You know, they get to know everybody. A lot of people would say, how could a young man growing up in Italy turn out to be one of the top two high school basketball players in the country? How could, that, how could that be? Uh, well, once I came back from Italy, well, first of all, when I was in Italy, I was a pretty good basketball player over there. Uh, but everybody said, once, once, you, once you come back to America, you're not going to be as good because the talent is so much higher, competition is so much better. So when I came back, it was really one of my top goals to uh, become one of the best here in America. I wanted to prove everybody wrong that told me I couldn't do it. When I came back here, I just played as hard as I possibly could and played every single moment. And here I am. And yet, you couldn't have devoted everything to basketball because you're a very bright young man as well. What I mean is, we live in a structured society that requires certain kids to go to school at certain times. and You're bright. You have your grades. Is that important to you too? Oh, it's very important because nowadays people, when they think about athletes, don't even think about basketball or ice hockey or football. They don't really concentrate on their grades. And I think now people say, well, if he's a good basketball player, he might not be doing good in school. Or he's going to put the ball in the hoop, but. There's always that but. And I don't want to have any buts when people mention Kobe Bryant. I don't even say he's a great basketball player, he's a good person, and he does great in class. Is, I mean, is that what makes you extremely satisfied because that's what we've heard all along the way. And when we got to know you a little bit better, uh, you know, we were drawn to, yeah, you can play hoops, but you know, there's a there's hundred kids we see a year that can play hoops. It's like, wow, this guy's a sharp young man. Is that what you like hearing? Yes, that's what I like hearing. Um, I know that I'm a pretty good basketball player. People come up to me and compliment me on my basketball every day. But I, I wouldn't mind hearing Kobe. You're a good person, you, know, you help me out through school or you know, you're doing great in school and things like that. I like to hear that kind of stuff. So you met this young man where? South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. And his name? Jared Gibson. A fan of yours? Yes. You meet him at a tournament and he writes you a letter afterwards. Beautiful letter. What does it say? Dear Kobe, how's life treating you these days? I sincerely hope that this letter may find you in the best of health. I'm writing to thank you for the outstanding performance and character you displayed at the Beach Ball Classic. My name is Jerry Gibson. Gibson. I'm the little guy who continuously hung around you from Pennsylvania. Kobe, I just want you to, I just want you to know the tremendous impact you've had on my life in the short time I was in your presence, not only as a player, but as a person. You are real, down to earth, and we're accessible to your fans. What I admire most is the 1,000 you scored on your SAT scores. The special relationship you have with your dad. Fame no more, no more money can buy you that. The game of life has dealt you the perfect hand. You're intelligent, have a loving family, and you're a very gifted basketball player. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow in life awaits you. Grab it. But please remember these three things. Always thank God and your family. Two, the hard work it took you to succeed and what it's going to take to keep you there. Three, never forget us, little guys. We saw you at the beginning of your rise to stardom. 
just as you just as you've touched me and given me the inspiration to be somebody there'll be thousands more in the future stay humble stay focused stay real that's that's really a, a touching letter yeah what are things that now that you've had an opportunity to read again, I'm sure you've read it many times, what are the things that jump out at you, that seem real to you, that you do need to think about? Well, the thing when he said, uh, stay focused, stay real. That's very important to me because you hear about athletes who, before they reach stardom, you know, you see them, they slap files with you, speak to you or whatever. And then when they reach stardom and get money or whatever, they kind of stick their noses up. You know, and say, well, the world owes me something. And that's something I don't, I don't want to ever be looked at. You know, I want to stay myself. And, and when people see me on the street, they can just come up to me, speak to me, Kobe, how you doing? And it's just a great, he helps me stay focused when he writes letters like this, when people write me letters like this, because they, they inspire me. You know, I look at this wall and it's, describe it to me. <laughs> well, it's basically pictures from, uh, my years of high school days in Lower Marion. You know, I won the Player of the Year. Uh, you have a couple of pictures of the summer tournaments, AAU, and the Player of the Year pictures. And this is basically what I've accomplished so far in high school. So far, there's a lot ahead. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm ready to get it on, finish this high school season strongly. Uh, hopefully win a state championship. That's my ultimate goal. Hopefully I can do that. And of course, did the summer. We get to play some more, some more great basketball, great basketball players. Your father, uh, you know, thank goodness, no serious injury. You, no serious injury. Right. Of course, there is that unbelievable knock on whatever is around us possibility on any of us at any given day that something can happen. Is that why education is so important as well? Yes. I mean, you have to have something to fall back on. I'm not naive enough to believe I'm going to play NBA basketball. I'm not going to get hurt. I'm Iron Man or whatever. You have to have something to fall back on. You have to stay at an even kill. And, and therefore, I do good in school and I get good grades. What do you think about when you think, what am I going to do? You know, I, I have this unusual situation that one uh, high school athlete, maybe every 15 years, realistically, might be able to do. What am I talking about? <laughs> well, that's going to the NBA. Uh, whether to go to college instead. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough decision because um, you have the option to go to college, get a great education, and play some basketball, or go to the NBA, play some basketball day and night, and get paid for doing so. But that is a job. And you have to realize that you're going to be missing out on a big part of your life. So it's something that I'm really going to have to concentrate on before I make a decision. Can the NBA wait? Yes, definitely, definitely can wait. Definitely can wait. I'm not just going to throw myself out there because uh, I'm being pressured to, I'm being forced to. I'm going to take my time, feel I'm ready, then I'm going. But it's going to be my choice and only my choice. Which brings to uh, the other question. If you decide to go college, it's got to be LaSalle, right? It has to be. <laughs> or am I wrong? Oh, I hear that every day. Everybody comes up to me and says, well, you have to go to LaSalle because your father's there. And that's not true. My father has raised me to be an individual. My mother's raised me to be an individual. They've always said, Kobe, I want you to make your own decision. My father tells me this every day. He says, Kobe, I don't want you to come to LaSalle because I'm there. I want you to come to, to, come to LaSalle, to play some basketball, go to get, get a great education. He doesn't want me to just go to LaSalle and 20 years from now, come back and say, hey, Dad, I made a mistake. I, I should have listened to my own. I should listen to my gut feeling and went elsewhere. He doesn't want me to do that. He wants me to make my own choice so I have no regrets in the future. You talk very passionately about family. You said that that's the thing you love the most about Italy. You, what are your feelings about your family? I love them so much. I can't explain it. Uh, I love my mother so much. She's done so much for me. My father too. My sisters as well. They've always been there for me. My mother and father, when we're in the house, the people that are there, I can rely on, I can count on whenever I need something. 
And once I step outside the house and step onto the streets and go to school, my sisters, my sisters have always been there for me. You know, ever since I was a little kid, they were like my shield and the, and the sword fight. You know, they've always been there for me, protecting me from right and wrong. And still to this day, they do that. And I love them with all my heart. So, Sheree and Shay, if you're listening, I love you so, so much. What is it about this game that you love? Hearing the ball bounce, uh, the feeling that you get out making a great pass, you know, walking on the hardwood, lacing up your sneakers. I, I just love it. I love jumping, I love dunking, I love hearing the crowd going ooh and ah. The whole game is just tremendous, you know. <laughs> I sound like an NBA commercial or something. Like, I love this game, you know? But I do, I love it. Did you ever consider any other sport? <laughs> I tried to play football uh, when I was in sixth grade. I like playing football. I like running up and down the field. But I got a little too tall. You know? I was a little too tall to play a running back, and people started hitting me in my legs, and I didn't feel very good. So <laughs> that was the end of that. What's your favorite shot? pull-up shot. I love it because you have an opportunity to uh, make your defender dance, do a little dance for you. Get the ball at the top of the key, put a little move on him, the defender's falling back, you take him to one spot, he thinks you're going to the basket, he slides all the way back, and you just pull up right in his face. I love that. Honest answer. Would you rather do something spectacular offensively or defensively? Defensively. No, que no question, because I can come down, I can do a thousand and one dunks, it doesn't matter. But the guy's coming at you full speed and I'm in there protecting the house. The guy's going up trying to dunk or whatever and I go up and I just catch the ball and I throw it out of bounds, but block it so I can start a fast break. I love that, it gives me such a big thrill. You rise to meet the challenge regardless. You obviously know that there's some people that say you're ready for the NBA right now and you know what? There's some people that say that you actually need some work for your college game. What do you say? I say thank you for the feedback. You know, everybody has own opinion. Everybody sees you at a different level. So I'm going to listen and uh, see what I need to work on. Go out there, work on my skills. Somebody says, Kobe, you need to work on a certain aspect of your game. Then I'm going to go and I'm do it. And the next time they see me play, I'm going to say, hey, look, I worked on it. Now what? What do I have to work on now? And, if they have something else that they want me to work on, I'll go out and do the same thing. So I just really accept it, take it in stride, and work on it. The name Kobe's a great name. I got to tell you, that's, I like that name. Your dad told me what it means in Japanese. <laughs> Tender beef? <laughs> I just don't see you and look and go, Tender beef. Yeah, that's kind of far off, I guess. <laughs> um... I like my name. It's just pretty smooth. It's different. <laughs> kind of like your game. I like to think so. It's documented, it's factual, that Kevin Garnett did not have his grades. Right. Okay? Kevin Garnett's in the NBA. He's not blowing people away in the NBA. Do you think that because of all of the spotlight, that once again, oh my gosh, another guy did it. Since Sean Kemp, somebody did it. Do you think that people are going to go, there's another kid thinks he can do it, doesn't have his grades going to the NBA? Do you think about that? Uh, no. Because people will say, well, he doesn't have his grades. He doesn't have his grades. Until they read the paper in the, the morning, or like, if I do decide to come out and say, hey, this guy's pretty smart. You know, he has a 3.0 GPA, got 1080 on his SATs. Maybe he's not just some old, just another kid just coming in thinking he can run things. So they didn't have any doubt. They'll see it right there in the paper right in front of them. If Kevin Garnett did not go directly from high school to the NBA last year, would you even be thinking about it? Yep. Yep, that was my goal since ninth grade, believe it or not. Uh, I told one of my best friends, and still my best friend to this day, I said, when I'm a senior in high school, I want to have the option to either go to the NBA or go to college. I didn't know if he believed me. I didn't know if anybody believed me. But that was a goal that I've always had. And, I really didn't look and say, oh, Kevin Garnett did it. Now I'm seriously going to consider trying to do it. It wasn't like that. You know? I've been raised to be an individual. and Regardless of Kevin, if Ken, Kevin stayed in college or went to college or whatever, I'd still be in the same situation I am today. Do you think, have you thought, will it be enough for me to know that I could have gone to the NBA 
Might that be enough for you? And might that be the reason that you go to college? Uh, no. The reason I go to college is because I feel that I need more experience, I need more maturity, um, and that I have some growing up to do. You know, and that I want to go and experience the college life and get that education while I was there. Can you tell me honestly right now, do you know what you're going to do? No. It's like, it's like a balance beam. Like, uh, one week I said to myself, hey, I would like to go to the NBA. That's what I'm going to do. Because I think I saw Chicago play Orlando or something. I got excited. Then I see North Carolina play Duke. Man, this college atmosphere is crazy. This is what I want to do. I want to go to college. So I changed my mind like every other week. But, you know, once I reach that point, I get to an even kill and say, this is what I want to do. I think that's what I decide.